What's up guys, Winter Kills here, and welcome to another post-commentary duel video. This is a, uh, a playtesting match recorded actually a few weeks ago. I've had it in my uh, unedited pile of videos on my computer for a little while now. I've been waiting to get up the last bit of feature matches. There was five rounds last time, so I had to upload all five of those. But this is this, and I believe... Another match, which is uh, Kaijus versus Atlanians. Um, and that, keep in mind that Atlanian build uh, is a far uh, less up to date build than the one that I have now. Uh, so I'll probably get a new deck profile for Atlanians up very, very soon, as well as Synchro Fusionist. Um, it'll probably be my brother's deck since my deck is very far from completion. As uh, the extra deck goes, I'm still missing uh, triple, triple Omega, which is you know a hundred twenty dollars right there. If they're still like 35, 40 bucks, it's still gonna cost a whole lot of money, which I don't have right now. Which I'm trying to save up money for Infinite Gold, which is coming out. I think at my OTS store, my local tournament store, a uh, tomorrow actually, and I'm hoping to get a box of that to unbox the channel. But yeah, this is just a side match recorded from uh, testing from a couple weeks back. We've got Synchro Fusionist versus uh, Pepe or Draco Pals, whatever you want to call it. So he opened up a board of Evil Swarm Nightmare and, of course, our Ascending Draco Slayer Magister. Now I've got to make a field that, you know, I can't... i got to make a field that, like... In such a way that if he wants to book something, because uh, that's what Nightmare does, he is like an instant book a moon, and it's not once per turn, so he can book up to two things. I've got to get like the most out of my plays before he ends up st starts slowing my plays down. And he's very strategic about how he goes about choosing what targets, what stuff I end up, you know, the stuff that I summon is that you know he ends up varying basically of what he's gonna actually. Book of Moon, he's just not going to burn the effect right off the bat on every single summon. Um, and I think one thing he ended up regretting doing is not booking a level leader that comes up in the future. Uh, right there, actually. No, he did book a moon it. Booked a moon the level leader, and I think that was probably his best bet right there. Level leader is a very, uh, very, very good card for the deck, and that's just going to end up shutting down my whole play right there. I end up getting a few draws, setting up a few plays. As you can see, I've got uh, Recover as well as Jet Synchron in the graveyard, and I've got my Mizuki set up as well, just in case that Unizombie is going to hit the graveyard, I can revive it and uh, use its effect again. I've got Plague Spreader in deck to send, so it's still live. Hopefully, I don't end up drawing into it. Uh, that's always a problem you got to watch out for. But as you can see, is assembling a massive field over on his side of the field. Um... He's got Dynaster, two Magister now, and still uh, one uh, Nightmare with one Material left on it. And it turns out, actually, this moment, he cannot beat over my Acel Synchron, which I believe has 2100 to 2200 defense. And uh, he's not going to be able to beat over that. So I'll get to keep that, which is nice, as a nice uh, you know, target to make Synchro plays. And one thing I really wish I could have done in that situation is made Stardust Charge Warrior with the Formula Synchron that I have. I would have been able to, uh, if that, if I'm seeing it correctly, I'm kind of watching this from a distance, uh, that Unizami I believe is a level 4. And uh, that and the Formula Made 6 for Charge Warrior, which is basically a level 6 Formula Synchron. You'll see there, see there I pulled out a Trish. Um using that Garnet I had in my hand. Very, very bad draw. He did book it though. The effect is still going to go through. Not going to get rid of the Nightmare since obviously he's going to burn its last material. It's no longer a threat. I don't need to get rid of it. I'd rather get rid of Dynaster at this point. So that's what I end up doing. As far as follow-up plays I have right now, I'm not really too sure what I have for a follow-up play. I guess that this is from a while ago. I believe... Jet Synchron is still in the graveyard. It's underneath the Unizombie there. And I'm going to use Unizombie, or not Unizombie, I'm going to use Mizuki to bring out Unizombie once again. 
and I discard a level eater and send a plague spider. Now I got a level five Unizombie. The thing about Unizombie and level eater, it's an instant level five synchro if you've got the stuff to you know use its effect. Obviously, that's why Unizombie and level eater, in my opinion, are is a very very great first turn opening because allows you to do so much, allows you to get your librarian on the field uh, very very fast. So I end up sinking for Librarian here, not using level leader set, I'm going to use uh, Jet Synchron out of Grave by discarding a card. I have to discard that Glow Bulb, which is really, really nice. Not going to summon Plague Sweater. I do, I do take some plays back here and there, uh, so if you're wondering, like, oh wait, why did that happen? Or that looked kind of weird. That's because this is a testing match, you know, I'm, not, I'm trying to make, think through the most optimal plays and try to make the most optimal plays. Uh, because if you're testing, you don't want to just, you know, kind of just go through like bleh, whatever and have mediocre testing. You want to take the time to think through your plays. And if you're in the middle of a play and you're like, oh, well, I could definitely make a better play now that I thought of this play or maybe I wasn't thinking of it earlier, you know, go back and make that play and kind of drill it in your head in that situation that that's the play you want to end up making. At least that's what I do in my opinion. Of course, uh, in tournament matches, depending on my playing against, if they like don't really care if I take a small playback. Obviously, the bigger the play, it's going to be harder, you know, to let your opponent make your opponent let, let them take it back. And my my local sometimes is pretty casual, depending on how many people are there that day, because sometimes we'll have like five or six people, which is kind of sad, because we used to have like 30 or 27 all the time until another tournament store started having uh, tournaments all the time. Um, and then it kind of drove out people, which which is kind of sad. Uh, and that that one locals that ended up you know drawing everybody to it had is really really far away, um, but it's kind of like a small regional and it's a free tournament entry. If you go XO, you get 50 store credit. If you go X1, you get 15. If you go uh, XO and then have a tie, uh, you get 30 dollars store credit. So it's definitely worth it, but you've got to be on your game and it's like a small regional. Like I said, there's like 50 people there for Yu-Gi-Oh, and then on top of that, like you know, another 50 for magic, so it's pretty, pretty crazy, uh, but yeah, sometimes we have a, a big local, sometimes we have a small locals, but, and as you notice, this is a very long match, and this is sped up to 400%, this match, uh, not sped up, I believe was over an hour and a half long, and I'm no way going to be able to commentate through that thoroughly, and have a voice left over, I've still got like three matches left to do commentary over as well as as I'm doing this uh, this past week's two feature matches that I have I didn't get to record every single round I only got two rounds so that's that's all I've got for this week but next locals is right around the corner and I've got some other stuff to upload as well but let's catch up here with what's going on in the actual game uh, we've got me going first, obviously. If you're going, if you're playing single fusionist, one thing you definitely want to learn right off the bat is that you want to go first. That's always what you want to do. Going first is your bread and butter. And uh, I don't know if he did this on purpose or not. Uh, I guess he kind of just did it to see like firsthand the special summoning capabilities that single fusionist has. So he activates Max C. But now I have to make the decision. Do I have the resources? Did I open up well enough to the point where I'm able to make all the summons I need? I have to make like 34 special summons in order for to deck them out or else if I pass, you know, if I end up passing turn and I only take six cards out of or five cards out of his hand with the triple omega double trish, that still leaves him with 35 cards roughly. 34 or 33 cards roughly you know and like two left in deck he could probably kill me so i need to invest very carefully into each play that i make and this is this was the longest match or longest game of the match game two was because i ended up taking so much time to think through each individual play and i do actually end up getting him to deck out spoiler alert i end up decking him out all 40 cards of his deck will be in his hand uh, by the end of this and I still end up using the Omega double Trish uh, And the thing about Omega, I think I've mentioned this in previous matches The nice thing about Cyframe Omega, and especially in a deck like this, you know, not only is it great for the hand loop 
but what else is good for is that it's a nice level leader target if you want it to be a level leader target and then obviously what I just did there now it's off the field and I can use other stuff I have more room essentially so that's why I really really like the card uh, not only for its you know hand looping capabilities but for its great great synergy it has with a deck like this in order to clear room uh, it's, it's just really great so you see power giant come down power giant is like one of my favorite cards in the deck and I discarded I think a level leader for that so that's a really great combo and now he's a level 5 that's what power giant does you can special summon it by discarding level 4 lower monster and then you decrease his level by the amount of levels that the monster discarded for the special summon so in this case I've discarded one he's at five and I'll sink for seven using the Yazi now once Yazi's on board you gotta make Trish you have to unless you're playing desynchro which in this case I'm not you've got to make Trish in order to uh, you know set up the Yazi for the back so you to spin the Trish back and back see alone besides that you know obviously you need it for the spin if you're not playing to synchro is that it's so clutch in the fact that you can destroy a card on your field and special summon a level four lower monster from your graveyard it's absolutely nuts especially since you can go get norden and how good norden is in this deck is absolutely ridiculous especially since uh, you can use him multiple times in a game in a turn, I should say, you've got Instant Fusion, Baxia, and Refusion, as well as Soul Charge, being able to revive Norden multiple times. And as you can see here, this quick flurry of uh, formula, I think I brought out Glow Up Bulb already, and uh, Norden, again, e Tally, Level Leader shenanigans. It's just, it's just amazing. The, the plays the deck can make. They're almost infinite. Like, if you what depending on what you open, like your plays are pretty much infinite. And he's got like less than six cards left in deck, so I'm pretty much confident at this point that I've got I've got game here by simply not being able to let him draw next turn. So, Norden on board. We got level leader. We've got Cypher and Omega, and of course we've got our main, most important card on field, and that being librarian he's gonna keep the fuel for the fire to keep it burning the whole you know the whole turn and I believe that yes that uh, recover is live so I could definitely bring that out pay the 2,000 life points and I think I've only got Tatsunoko and Trish left in my extra deck if I'm seeing that right uh, possibly another Omega if I didn't use an Omega to synchro which I think I might have I'm just gonna use the Omega's effect and get rid of another Armageddon Knight out of his hand. And Level Leader and Recover will come out. And then we'll make a Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko is gonna set up more plays. And now I've got Power Giant. Power Giant basically sealed the deal uh, without having to go any further plays. I discarded the Garnet. I could have sank for a Stardust Charge Wear again because I would have had the. Uh, the. Uh, the. Uh, what is it? I'm forgetting. Uh, Tatsunoko and the. Ch not the Charge Warrior. Tatsunoko and Power Giant, which was level 2. And I think I had a level leader on my board already. I wasn't exactly sure. But if I didn't, I could have got one there. Sank for 6 with Tatsunoko, Power Giant, level leader. Drew another card. Drew another card off Librarian. Charge Warrior, I think, will enhance this deck's capability. Depending on the ban list. Uh, if the ban list hits Itali. If the ban list hits instant fusion, which I don't think it will, I would think that would be an uncalled for hit. Every deck has access to instant fusion. I think it's a fair and balanced card. Uh, so, I don't see any reason to ban it. People are talking about Itali getting hit. And if Itali gets hit to 2 or 1, I don't see this deck suffering too much. It has other options and is definitely still playable. Maybe a tiny bit less consistent. But definitely still playable in my opinion. So as you see again, he opened up first her nightmare, and I end up having to go for the Trish immediately, which I think that's what I did. I'm assuming that's why it's banished. Um, I'm just so caught up with talking about other things here. 
But we've got Tatsunoko. I believe I booked Trish. And another booked extra deck monster. Not extra deck monster. Just another booked monster. It might be Love Leader or something. Booking the big guy though definitely hurts. Because obviously I can't Love Leader off it anymore. And Tatsunoko isn't doing too much for me at the moment. Unless I can Synchro uh, with something in hand that I that I can use, you know, something that's a valid target for Tatsunoko to use, and something that'll match up with something in my extra deck. If I had another Synchro Fusionist in hand, I could go for that Librarian, you know, revive something in my graveyard with like a uh, Instant Fusion or Refusion, but I don't think I have the necessary cards at this moment. I've got, I've resolved a Brilliant Fusion, which will give me that extra normal summon, which I might, may or may not have burned already. Not really sure, but there's the Instant Fusion that I, I'm assuming I searched. So yeah, that was a booked Trish we have there. See, I went for the Trish, uh, they're thinking I already didn't summon it, I think that's why, uh, those cards went back there. Oh no, okay, I see what's happening. Synchroing for five. Going for a cell. Now searching there. Okay, th I'm now I'm caught up here. It was Tatsunoko and a Synchro Fusion is brought back from Norden. To for a cell, Synchron, a cell Synchron sending jet. And then we're gonna synchro up to Omega. And again, this is one of the things you need to address early on if you're playing Synchro Fusion. This is you want Librarian on board because you're slowly burning your resources without having anything to replenish it. And, uh, but obviously at this point, I'm not like in a position where like if I make Librarian immediately and I don't have, you know, the stuff that I would have had otherwise to keep Synchroing if I would have gone to Librarian, I'm not getting my draws. Like, um, I guess I was saying, like if I'm going Librarian first, I'm not going to be able to make aggressive plays immediately. So, and that Baxia was clutch as hell. I'll pop my set level leader and spin my set Trish back to the extra deck, being very productive, you know, with the the situation that I've been given. Uh, that's why Baxia is like the one of the best cards in the extra deck besides Norden and Omega, obviously. Uh, and then we'll get the Norden back. Norden's going to be able to summon something else back here. It's going to go for Gloat Bulb. And then we'll level leader off the Omega to make it a 7. Or off the Baxia to make a 6. Not Omega, that's a Baxia chill in there. I could go for Formula. Get a draw. And then I believe I could level leader again off that Baxia to make it a 5. That's 6, 7, 8. I could go for another Omega if I needed to. Because at this point, he is low on cards. So if I can't OTK, I can get all the cards out of his hand, have returning monsters to my side of the field, and at that point, uh, he's in a bad position, you know, with no cards in hand. Or if I leave an Omega on field during his turn, you know, I can just knock it out of his hand and he can't do anything that turn. Ancient Fairy Dragon is here. Uh, basically, that's going to allow me to get a free special summon from my hand, which is awesome because I can get that recover in my hand, which I think was in my hand for the longest time. Uh, and I'll get that out of my hand into the graveyard where I want it. Level Eater coming back out with that formula there. That level 6 Ancient Fairy Dragon, I definitely have another Omega set up here with the formula on the Ancient Fairy. I could go for Trish as well if I wanted to, to take that other card out of his hand as well as his set card on the field. Debating though whether or not I want to do that at the moment and it looks like I'm going to hit the set Draco awakening uh, Banish card of his hand and I believe another card in his graveyard if there was one I've got level leader engrave again Level leader like I said is another amazing card for the deck And then we're gonna bring out recover. We'll pay the 2,000 for it and actually, the one rough thing that it was uh, playing against this deck, against uh, Draco Pals Game 1, is like I couldn't keep up 
or less I should say, you know, vice versa, he could keep up with my uh, extra deck usage. So it made it very hard for recover to use. So that's one thing you definitely want to pay attention to if you're playing this matchup against this, this deck is that if you can't keep up with their extra deck summoning, like that recover is just a dead card. So you might want to side that out at least something like I thought about doing. And then you'll see there, we ended with a Trish, Baxi attacking and then Omega coming back and then I end up just killing him right away because he didn't draw a card he needed But that's gonna wrap it up for this long long post commentary. I think one of the longer ones I've ever done uh, And you some of you guys have been asking for more synchro fusion. So I hope this sufficed I really hope you guys enjoy this. This is a long one up. You grabbed a snack or something Because it was a long 20 plus minutes And my throat's starting to hurt a little bit but I've still got more stuff to do, more post-commentary for you guys. I'm not stopping. We're keeping going. We've got spring break coming up. And boy, oh boy, am I motivated to post a whole lot of stuff for you guys and get a whole lot of stuff recorded for you guys. So the train is not stopping. We're just getting started. And we're at 14, about 1470 subscribers right now. Like, thank you guys. Thank you guys a whole lot for that. We're almost at 1,500, which is crazy to think. Like, we're coming up on 2,000 pretty, pretty fast. And I owe it all to you guys for supporting me thus far. Like, it's absolutely incredible. I, I know I say it a lot, but, like, really, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you who come here and enjoy watching the videos, who leave, you know, constructive criticism um, and stuff like that. really appreciate it, each and every one of you guys. just want to take the time to say that. Anyways, leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave your comments in the comment section below. As always, you guys know the drill. Uh, and if you're new here, do yourself a favor. Hit the subscribe button. I'm sure you'll be happy with the content provided. Um, if not, oh well. And uh, yeah, Winter Kill is signing out, guys. As always, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.